Chris from Writer Now Magazine and TV. Hi, everybody. I'm Dale. I'm Kat. Check it out. Peace out. Love you guys. I decided to pursue a career in law because it gives me an opportunity to help people. When a client chooses us to represent them, they're entrusting us with a huge responsibility. It's our goal to exceed their expectations with our personalized service and to help them to achieve the best possible recovery to compensate them for their injuries. That's where we come in. We come in and we solve that problem for them and uh, really set them on the right track in order to try and get back to what their life was like before the accident happened. Together, we are a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We don't focus on one thing, we're here to help everybody that's in need. We could be helping somebody in an accident, or somebody with cancer, a sick child, an animal. Anywhere that there's help needed, we're here to help. We give back every single penny that we raise. We've been around since 2012, and the only way that we have survived is because of people helping us. Thank God for Fran Hash Law. Without her, many times we would not still be here, but we are. This is my heart. Until the day I cannot physically move, I will be out there helping people. We do need help though. Please give me a call anytime. 813-493-3650. We want to continue to be able to help those that need it. Thank Hey, I'm here with Valerie Smith from Rider Now Magazine, getting ready to open up the brand new Liquid Therapy Bar at 6501 Park Boulevard. We're going to have food, we're going to have all our great bike nights, our car shows, we're going to have karaoke, we're going to have pool tournaments. We're just going to be a constant, non-stop party here at the all-new Liquid Therapy Bar. Come out and check us out. Can't miss it. It's going to be an awesome time. Look forward to seeing you. 6501 Park Boulevard. Let's do this. Everybody, this is Josephine coming at you from Burt's Barracuda Harley Davidson here in St. Petersburg, Florida. We love Ryder now and we love Fran Hosh and we love Burt. And I'm here to introduce you to our new general sales manager, Chris Hooker. He's coming to us from years of experience here in the Harley Davidson world. He and I and all of us are ready to serve you with all of your motorcycle needs. You got anything to add, Chris? I just want to say thank you very much for everything. I would love the opportunity to earn your business. And if anything, stop down and just say hello and come say hi to your favorite hooker. See, dress. He means him. <laughs> At 10525 49th Street North uh, Clearwater, technically right across the street from Quaker Steak and Lou, but we love those guys too. See you soon. Hi, everybody. I'm Dale. I'm Kat. And we're with the Dale and Kat Show. You can catch us every Thursday night on Facebook live at 8 p.m. Also catch us on Instagram and YouTube. Hey, Kat, we're on this great new journey now. We're going with the Rider Now magazine. We're excited to get to all the great events that are going to be coming up and uh, looking forward to meeting everybody out there and come and join us on our new journey. So it's going to be a great time, Kat, and we're looking forward to it. And uh, we can't wait to see you guys there at the next event. So tune in on the Dale and Kat show every Thursday night. We'll see you guys all later, and we'll see you real soon. Hey, everybody. Peace. God bless. Keep it old school. Keep it old school.
guys, this is Valerie Smith, and I'm the publisher of Writer Now Magazine, and we are charity and benefit driven. And this show is all about us interviewing people and what they do in the community and how they help other people and how we can help them. And we are sponsored by Fran Hosh Law Group. Thank, thanks to her, she makes everything possible for us. What I have today for you is interesting. I brought in a guest that everybody in Tampa Bay knows, uh, probably everybody all over the state, but I have Mr. T. Man, Thomas T. Man Brown from Tampa Homeless Outreach. T. Man, thanks for coming into my show. Thank you for inviting me. You know, I want to pick your brain because so many people see what you do. You know, we watch your post, and it almost makes me cry when I look in my Facebook and you say, got another Navy or Army or yeah. Marine veteran off the street into housing. First of all, tell me what made you take this route? <laughs> Why are you doing this? Well, it, the opportunity was offered to me about in, almost 11 years ago, 10 or 11 years ago. Uh, by my C my now CEO for my paid job is with Tampa Crossroads, right. uh, which is a nonprofit, and I started my nonprofit Tampa Homeless Outreach three years ago to fill a gap between what uh, we could do with the VA right. versus what you can't do. Right. With my nonprofit, we could do a lot of things for the homeless vets right. that the VA doesn't cover. Right. Well, you know, I, I I think it's just a blessing that God put you on that path because you're filling that niche that kind of lost in space there where there definitely is a need. And when you go out and you meet these people, how do you walk up to them and what do you say? <laughs> well, it depends on if they're on the street or in the woods. Right. The ones in the woods, I always make an announcement as I'm going into the woods. Because you don't want to just walk up on somebody. Right. So I'm like, hey, anybody back here, you know. And uh, then I introduce myself and I ask any vets in the camp. And uh, if they are, then I say, I, I need to talk to you about, you know, possibly, possibly getting you in your own place. Wow. And uh, believe it or not, the other people that's in the camp, they kind of get jealous because... Yeah. I'm concentrating on the vet. Right. But I can also help them too, but my main concentration is, is the vet, is right. a veteran. Right. Um, I just switch gears. Yeah. yeah I mean, it, right. to anybody you talk to, you, you got to switch gears because no two people are the same. Right. And I listen to them first and see how they're presenting. Right. And then uh, I roll with it. Sure. Now, I guess it's a, it's a talent that I have. But Wonderful. I can roll with it. Do you feel like the ones that are there are there because they have left society and want to be there with no restrictions? Or do you feel like they're there because they couldn't do any better? There's a lot of different reasons. Uh, because there, there's people that's, that's homeless and that I've run across over the years from all different walks of life, even, right. even attorneys. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's homeless. Wow. And the common theme is the... Um, Lost a job, and things started spiraling downhill. Right. They couldn't get another job right away, and right. then the marriage dissolved, mm -hmm. and off went the wife and the kids, and they can't afford a place to stay right. because most of them was on the two income. Yeah. And uh, they go to hotels as long as they can, as long as money will allow them. Then they right. have to do something else, sleep in their car or... or yeah go to the woods or whatever they need to do. Right. Now, when you walk up to a veteran, do they have to give you proof that they are a veteran? Or do you find people out there that say they're veterans, but they just like wearing that hat or that shirt or for the sympathy? Actually, from doing this so long, you can tell whether somebody is, is telling the truth or not. Yeah. Uh, especially when it comes to veterans. And I have a, a surface, a pad, yeah. that I could put their name and stuff into the computer and tap into the uh, VA computer and tell whether they're a vet. And right. if they are a vet, what type of discharge they have. Right. Uh, there's a lot of people who will say they're vets. And uh, my thing is, I get on them if they're not a vet. Right. I, I dig into them. Good. Because we served. Yes. We wore that uniform. You didn't. And now you're trying to get something from somebody else sure. you know, and it's not right. Right. 
and I work with Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office and Tampa Police Department. Uh, a lot of their homeless initiative officers and right. deputies would call me sure if they get somebody and then i meet up with them right. i make it a priority meet up with them and get them off the street right. and we've got your website up right now tampa homeless outreach mm -hmm. com mm -hmm. or dot org right if mm -hmm. someone wants to get in touch with you and make donations mm -hmm. or maybe they know someone that's living out you know in the field by their house or you know i mean they go to tampa homeless outreach dot org mm -hmm and they can look at the home site and see what you do. Now, I'm just curious, what, you are a veteran, correct? Mm -hmm. Tell mm -hmm. me a little bit about you and your personal story. I, uh, I was in 11 years, a little over 11 years in the Army and mm -hmm. proud of it. Right. And uh, eventually went to Special Forces training, uh, graduated from that and uh, as a uh, Special Weapons Sergeant and I was over in Europe, and my dad passed away. Oh. And my dad was my, he was my confidant. Sure. He was the most important person in my life right. at, at the time. And he passed away while I was over in Europe. And I came home to uh, sit at the hospital with him when he had a, his first stroke. Right. And uh, stayed there the whole time. And when he was getting ready to be discharged, I went back and uh, I eventually got out because uh, when he passed away, I took it real hard. Right. I, I took it very hard, and sure. I got out, and um, uh, and I met my CEO. Right. Uh, of Tampa Crossroads, and uh, I've been knowing her for years when I was a forensic specialist. Wonderful. And uh, she offered me the position. It was a new position. Wow. And she didn't interview anybody else. She said, you're wow. it if you want it. And I jumped on it. Wonderful. So it's been a marriage ever since. <laughs> you know, I always say God puts people in our past for a reason. And uh, evidently that was it because look where you are and look at all the people that you help. And and when you've gone into these places, whether you're in the woods or, or somebody in their car, have you ever had them be confrontational with you? Or do they try to argue or fight with you? I've had a couple, only a couple in the last almost 11 years. Right. Um, and they didn't put their hands on me because I, I told them, you know, it, well, I, I said some things. Right. And then I turned around and, and walked off. Okay. I, I walk away from a fight quicker than right. anybody else, but don't touch me. Right, exactly. Yeah. So, exactly. And, uh, we didn't have a problem other than using nasty words, right. calling me different names, nasty right. names and right. stuff. And I just let it roll off and just keep moving because they right. don't pay my bills. And there you go. You know, so and I have a house to go to. There you go. Exactly. So. That's, that's the way I look at it, right. so I don't take it personal. Well, you know, I've learned in my walk with what I do, helping people, a lot of times when people are abrasive, mm -hmm. it's their insecurity. Mm -hmm. And uh, and they, you know, they, they kind of use that as a shield. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm tough and you won't get close to me. You know, mm -hmm. I won't let you get close to me because I'm tougher than you are. Yeah. You know, I'm sure that you do. Now, tell me about your needs. What is it that you usually need or people could help you with or... Most homeless people uh, for homeless, the homeless are uh, normally like t-shirts yeah. and uh, socks. Socks is the biggest thing. Right. And uh, t-shirts, uh, shoes. Right. Work boots or uh, uh, personal hygiene items. Sure. And I keep things like that in my truck. Right. In, in both of my trucks. I even got some in my saddlebag on my bike. So if I run into a homeless person, then, you know, I just give it to them. Right. And what do you just say? Hey, brother, you homeless? I mean, no, what do you do? I don't do? ask what them do if they're homeless. So, <laughs> see, <laughs> that's what I do. I guess I'm doing it no, wrong. No, I don't ask them if they're homeless. <laughs> you know, I got to tell if you a quick, <laughs> I got to tell you a funny story. I was in Daytona Beach because mm -hmm. I live over in Ormond, too, and I went to the uh, Aldi's, and you have to put a quarter in the buggy. Mm -hmm. And as I was pushing the buggy back to my, my truck, this woman walked up to me. And she started giving me this, you know, hey, I'm homeless and all this. I said, first of all, I want to hear your story. Mm -hmm. I want to know why you've come to this. Because I'm looking at you, girl, and you look better than I do. <laughs> you're smaller than I am, and you're pretty than I am, and you're out here. So, you know, what is it? What's your demon? Mm -hmm. And she said, alcohol. I said, okay. And I, and I said, well, I'm going to give you this quarter. And then I gave her a couple bucks. But... <laughs> 
<laughs> when I got home to my old man, I was telling the story. He said, whoo, honey, you made her work for that money. <laughs> you really made her work. But, you know, I really was interested. I guess being yeah. a reporter and a, and a media person, I wanted to know, you know, what's your demon? What brought you to this? Mm. You know? Well, I think... Uh, I wouldn't recommend giving money to a homeless person. No. And I'm don't. telling you from experience yeah. because when I first started doing it, that's what I did. Sure. I, I gave money and then found out later from a TPD officer that that person OD'd later on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, you kind of you kind of busted me. You kind of fussed at me <laughs> once when I was telling you about the guy that lived over in Enterprise by, yeah. by where I live, by Lake Monroe. And, uh, and this guy, I see him all the time. Yeah. And my granddaughter was, you know, she was four or five at the time and said, Nana, why is he sitting there? And I, because she'd see him every time we go to the store, and I said, "Well, because he doesn't have a place to live," mm -hmm. and that, you know, and and I said, when we see people like that, we need to feel sorry, mm -hmm. and maybe some somebody will help them, mm -hmm. you know. And so later, as we were leaving the store, we brought him some snacks. Mm -hmm. You know, we gave him a couple bags of chips and a soda or whatever, and and. Uh, the next time we went that way, she said, Nana, there he is. Let's get his Coke. You know, but that's yeah. the same guy that you busted me when I said, yeah. T-Man, I got a, a homeless guy <laughs> that says he was a veteran. And I yeah. bought him some soup and some snacks and a four-pack of beer. And you're like, oh, <laughs> don't be giving them beer. Yeah. <laughs> well, you don't want to feed their habit. I that's mean, true. And that is very true. I love what I do. I, I, I really mean that. And... I have to give huge kudos to Fran. Yep. Fran is our biggest supporter. She is an and angel. And she is so awesome. And I'm waiting for the day that she could ride with me, go for a ride with me and uh, experience what I do every day. Right. Wow. I, I would love for her to do that. And she was going to send some people out to do that before all this COVID stuff sure, started. Sure, yeah. sure. But you can ride too. There you go. Anytime, anytime you want to, just there let me know go. a day ahead of time, and I'll take you with me. Wonderful. Well, you know, I'm quite a character. I don't know That's if you okay. want to take me in. No, I might be having a party in the homeless, <laughs> the camp for the homeless people. A lot of them are characters, too. I'm so sure. They, they'll love you. I'm yeah. sure. Well, okay. well, I have a little surprise for you. Can uh, I get TJ up here? TJ, we got TJ from the Suncoast Brotherhood. Hey, my love. Hello, dear There's Daniel. some stuff over there I need you to grab because oh, we're going to present this to T-Man right now. And Tony Siancy from Full Throttle Magazine, he's over here with me. See, I grab I men when I need month. help. <laughs> no, darling, I Good. ask you what I could give you <laughs> for, for your people. And we wow. have a bunch of shirts Socks and underwear. I'm going to tell you, I felt like it was oh. Christmas because you know it's the only time I buy socks and underwear. <laughs> Soap and canned food and wow, peanut butter. And toothbrush, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And soap. There you go. Everything. Yeah, Every, nice some deodorant. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, we, Thank we you just, so much. Hey, this is, we're sponsored by Fran Hosh, and, mm -hmm. and I always say Fran gives me money to bless other people, and these guys helping me out, we just wanted to, to bless you with that. And we're going we're gonna to roll the clip now so we can see a little bit about Fran Hosh. Okay. Thank you for okay. coming today. I, I it's my pleasure. Appreciate I appreciate it. you inviting me. I decided to pursue a career in law because it gives me an opportunity to help people. When a client chooses us to represent them, they're entrusting us with a huge responsibility. It's our goal to exceed their expectations with our personalized service and to help them to achieve the best possible recovery to compensate them for their injuries. That's where we come in. We come in and we solve that problem for them and uh, really set them on the right track in order to try and get back to what their life was like before the accident happened.
Hey, I'm Albie. And I'm the one three. We are from the Rock and Road Show. Thank you for watching Rider Now TV. And you can join us every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern at Facebook.com slash Rock and Road Show for a live interactive show about all things motorcycle and rock and roll. A special thank you to the Fran Haas Law Group for their continued sponsorship and support of Rider Now TV and the Rock and Road Show. You guys keep it rocking. Keep the rubber side down, baby. Valerie Smith from Writer Now Magazine and TV. Hi, everybody. I'm Dale. I'm Kat. Check it out. Peace out. Love you guys.